Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all okay today. I'm with James Fletcher today, who you may recognise, um, he has his own YouTube channel um, based around radio, survival, comms, um, solar, electric, all sorts of projects. I've anything done. gadgety, anything geeky, I like to play with. And this collaboration is about two years in the making, we finally uh, managed to find some time, so I've driven down to uh, where James lives in the Midlands today. Um, and we thought we'd do a collab, so we're going to, well, we're planning on, well, what we plan on doing today. Well, today we want to have a bit of a play with some handhelds. Um, bit of a range test, testing our bit of VHF, mainly UHF though. Uh, seeing the differences in quality and audio, the power, the ranges. Uh, and also, because on your channel, Lewis, I know you do quite a lot of uh, um, network radios, don't you? Yeah. So I thought it'd be interesting to have a bit of a play with these if there's coverage. Um, again, not really a comparison because it's totally different than UHF, but again, it's a form of media. Yeah, Or communication. So form of I'm a bit of a play, we have them, let's play with them. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, what we're also going to do is we're going to get out on the road, um, do a little bit of testing if possible. It has started snowing heavy as well, so I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do, but we'll get something in, as you'll see in the video as it goes along. We're also going to um, have a look at James's mobile setup in his car. He's done videos on that in the past and it's a, a really nice setup. So we're going to have a quick look around his setup and some of the comms gear that he's got in his car. And um, yeah, so here it goes, guys. Okay, so we've come out of the house now. Um, as you can see from the video there, it's really, really snowy. The weather's um, not great, so I don't think we're gonna get the range test in that we planned, but we're heading out sort of to Canic Chase area now, um, which is a, an area of natural beauty, like rural location down in, in Canic in Staffordshire, for those who don't know it. So I'm with James. James is driving today. Say hello, James. Hello. <laughs> so we've, we've brought some radio gear, brought the drone, although I don't think I'm gonna get any, any flying done. And um, we'll go and put a few calls out on the radio and, and see what we get and that's the plan yeah nothing else man the weather as you can see has really hampered our um, our day but we won't let that stop us will we james absolutely not <laughs> there's uh, radios in the car it's daylight let's go out there and smash this brilliant Okay, so we're on Castle Ring now, which is some local high ground. Where is it? Whereabouts is it? In uh, Cannock Wood, Staffordshire. So Cannock Wood, Staffordshire, and as you can see, the weather's like really, um, really closing in now. We've got loads of snow, a little bit of fog as well. So we're just going to put a couple of calls out on some handheld radios before we head back to the car and um, see what we can pick up. Two E zero KBA Portable. Two E zero KBA Portable. Calling CQ, CQ and sections. CQ, 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 this is 2 Echo Zero, Kilo Bravo Alpha, 2 Echo Zero, Kilo Bravo Alpha Portable, calling CQ in the sessions. CQ, 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 this is 2 Zero, KBA Portable, 2 Zero, KBA Portable on Castle Ring, calling CQ in the sessions. C Portable Station, this is Golf Zero. G0 Golf Radio Uniform. Thank you for coming back. Do you want to try going to uh, 525? 145 525. Radio Golf Uniform. 
Yeah, good afternoon there. You've got a 2E0 KBA uh, portable. The name to this side is James. Currently uh, walking around Castle Ring on a little bow thing handheld, over. Yeah, I've just about got that. You're a bit weak with me. You're barely an S point. I think you said you're James. I think your call sign is 2E0 Kilo Bravo Alpha. And uh, I don't know the location. Try again, please. Yeah, that's correct. The name is James. Call sign is 2 Echo Zero Kilo Bravo Alpha. I am portable. I'm on Castle Ring in Staffordshire, just using a very cheap and nasty uh, stock antenna on their Bofeng uh, UV5R, uh, if you're able to pick this transmission up at all, ever. Yes, yes, John, that's uh, really good. Uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly where that is, but I know uh, roughly. Uh, so from a little handheld point of view, pushing out just a few watts, uh, that's, uh, that's a very good signal from my end for you. Uh, you'll come through a full 509, 509 this end. Uh, very clear signal, over. Yes, OK, I'm running 60 watts here. Uh, the location I'm located about uh, 12 or 13 miles Right, is that any better now? Yeah, you, you watched uh, James was, then he did up to about two S points now over. Yeah, no problems, he's a bit taller than me, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stretch as much as I can. Yeah, the name this side is Lewis, Lima Echo Whiskey India Sierra, call sign. As James said, he's Mike 3 Hotel, Hotel Yankee. Uh, my home QTH is Manchester, um, but as James said, I've come down today uh, and we've met up to do a little bit of playing about on radio, so we're, uh, we've come to Castle Ring, and uh, as he said, it's snowing um, and freezing cold and foggy, but it's all in the name of radio, isn't it? Uh, back to you, uh, John. If you just give me a call sign again, um, just so I can make a note of it, um, from M3 HHY Portable. Yes, the call sign is Golf Zero, Romeo Golf. G zero R G U. Uh, yes, all copy. Um, are, you, are you on a different handheld, or are you sharing one of them? Yeah, James was on a uh, Bofeng UV5R, I'm on a UV82, I'm not sure if you know them at all, but slightly different, um, but both uh, 5 watt output power uh, dual banders, um, cheap and cheerful, and uh, definitely making the trip up to Mansfield today. From, from If memory serves me, it's quite a way, I'm uh, quite impressed with the uh, with the coverage, actually, from uh, from where we are. Um, the, the radio is definitely going out further than we can see anyway. Uh, back to you from M3HHY Portable. Zero RGU. Well, both rigs are doing equally well. Um, not, the, the, you know, to the point I thought you were on the same handheld, just passed it over. Uh, you both felt the same signal. Now, now the way you stood with it, uh, both of you are anything up to about two S points. Very good uh, clear bad. audio, no problem at all. And there is a lot of different uh, distance, sorry, between a lot of distance. I'm up on a hill here, right at the top of the county. Uh, Nottinghamshire is very well known for its mountains, but um, there are a few hills around, and I'm right on the top of the biggest one, the village of Hutley. And I'm um, about 670 foot ASL, or about 203 metres, something like that. I think the county summit is about 205 and a bit. So uh, within a handful of feet or a couple of feet of the, the very uh, highest spot. And uh, if you look at uh, where my house is, I've no address on there, but there's a, a pointer on the map on the QRZ.com to see uh, why I do so well. So very good line of sight over here. There's a lot of lots of places. The view is out the, um, out the bedroom window. I can see about 33 miles off to the south the hills of North Leicestershire and uh, quite a lot of other I think the furthest 
thing to see on land is the uh, big pole radio map that's um, from the coal field about 45 miles away. Right from the sky. In Manchester you live, uh, Lewis, up until uh, nearly six years ago now, I, I lived in East Manchester, I lived in Guy Bridge, Ashton under line, which is about six miles due east of the Manchester City centre. So I wonder what your home QTH is over. So what? So talk us through what you've got in the way of comms okay. in this car. Um, for comms, I've got dual band um, VHF and UHF. It's in the form of a Yaesu 7800, yep. um, which you'll see shortly. Uh, it's got a split um, split radio system, so the, the front panel comes off, mounted at the top here, uh, and the actual transceiver itself is under the boot, uh, under the seat, sorry. Um, under my Under seat. where you're sat there. Yeah. So the idea being that um, you can have just the head unit on the top, it's out of sight, you can't really see it from outside the vehicle, and it's easy to get to, easy to control as you're driving. Yeah. Um, I didn't want something that was big and bulky to be mounted onto the dashboard or to be mounted underneath. Yeah. So this was like the obvious place. For the microphone, as you'll be able to see, I've got the extension lead uh, plugged in for the mic and the side of the radio, just all the way down. So on the side of the head unit, we've got the extension lead that plugs into the side for the microphone. So that runs, runs along under the trim, down the side, underneath the dash, um, for easy access for that to be plugged into. So it's nice and handy, yeah. and it's all out of the way as well. You've got to be careful, you don't want wires. It's a tidy install, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's, and it wasn't that difficult to do either. Um, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, but it's not difficult to do. And what's holding this in place? I'm using a proper bracket. It's one of the genuine Yesu brackets holding that on. Right. And then I've just made a small couple of holes on the top of it and just screwed it from inside going up. So this is only like um, some sort of um, like a felt, a tough, ah, tough right. and felt. It doesn't rattle around yeah. or move when you're driving. When you're pressing buttons, a bit of movement, but nothing that uh, kind of puts you off. So that for me is absolutely perfect where it is. So the radio itself is mounted underneath the, uh, the passenger seat of the vehicle at the front. So the way I've done it is there's a little drawer that just undoes and all the antenna and the power cables come from underneath the seat into here. And I don't know whether that can come out anymore. There we go. The body of the radio is actually fastened in with a proper bracket onto this so it's nicely securely uh, attached in. And then as you can see I've just kind of thrown in the power cables into this tray here. So if I do a bit of a, a radio day and I want to connect a, a better antenna on, I can easily access this radio under that antenna and plug in a, an external and have a bigger system, a bigger, better aerial. So and the speaker. Well. It is, it's, it's safe, it doesn't move around and it's, uh, it does the job really well. And that just hides away neatly out of sight. And what's this on the dash? Okay, on the dash, um, this is the President Grand 2. Uh, CB radio. Don't really use CB much. Um, it is what it is. It's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. A lot of amateur radio is start off with CB. Mm, I started off with CB. Um, I think you'll probably find most do. Sometimes uh, it can be quite useful and fun to play with. There's a lot of idiots on there, but occasionally um, you'll have a, a nice chat with someone. Yeah. So it's, it's just about having the, the options available to me, and it's about having um, just different forms of media. And communications yeah 
why don't we go and have a look at the antennas? Let's do that. Okay. So the two aerials I have on the car is the CB radio, this is 10 11 meter band, and then my dual band basic diamond uh, little twig there. This is actually fastened on to the, uh, I don't know, the boot of the car effectively. So as you open it, it does kind of move along, but you don't have any problems with signal loss or with a swab being adjusted by opening it, it works really well. Um, I didn't really want to be drilling holes too much into the car. So what I did was, because the car's stereo, I don't really use, uh, it's all digital now inside my car for the media, didn't need the aerial. So I took the aerial off, but I've actually mounted this in the original hole that the original car aerial's fastened onto. So that's uh, what I've done with that one. Um, this is a like gutter mount uh, or boot lip antenna mount. Uh, fits on just nicely and uh, does the job just well. Okay, so that's the antennas and the radio gear. What else have you got in there for when you're operating portable? Okay, so for portable use, I like to have a variety of things with me. Open up the back of the car, you'll see quite a few bags of bits and bobs. So if you've seen my channel before, you'll know that I do quite a bit of work and time doing battery packs and such like. This is um, a portable power unit. 12 volt battery, you can jump start a car with this, which has been quite useful on occasions. Um, I've added my own extra 12 volt output as well, using the uh, the power pole uh, little connectors. Uh, also, it's got an inverter as well, so that's really useful for uh, some of the work I do. But also, in these bags, this is where I keep kind of bits and bobs really, just for tatting around with. So you know those occasions where you just end up by being on the chase with a bit of time on your hands or you're, you're out and about and you can just do the handy. It's nice to know that I've got a spare Bofeng UV5R in my bag. Always charged, ready to go. These stock antennas aren't the best. So I carry uh, one of these, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Nagoya, Nagoya, Nagoya. Nagoya. The NA771 dual band. It uh, helps quite a lot with the, the transmitting. So, with that, obviously, you want to be able to charge it. So, I've got a charger. Um, the great thing is, with these, I bought these charging leads uh, for about £1.99 each off eBay. So, you can charge it from a USB. Uh, it's surprising, it, uh, it works really well. And uh, so, I think it's a 12 volt input on these or 10 volt input. But that will actually do a very good job. So, at the same time also, I love with both things, as you can probably tell, but this is a programmed up to um, PMR channels 1 to 8 and GMR, which is channels 9 to 16. It just gives me more comms, more, uh, more functions and features to use. All programmable and works alongside the UV5. Um, if I want to be doing some work uh, not using the battery, not drain the battery down. I've got a, a battery eliminator. Um, again, that just plugs into your cigarette lighter. That's on the back of your radio. If I want to charge up the triple uh, eight, again, I've got a charger there. And again, that's USB powered as well. And then, of course, we all need external microphones, speaker mic. Uh, these are fairly cheapish ones based on the uh, the Kedwoods. Works quite well. Well, for what you pay for it anyway. Um, and then, should I be inside and wanting to charge the various radios, I have adapters in here which will just plug straight into the mains. Um, extension leads, all fused up with uh, power poles connected. Separate car charger, 12 volt adapters. More mains powers. Little headlight torch, um, and then loads and loads of spare batteries for various torches and other bits of radio. Always having with me a little LED torch because you just never know. And then uh, this is just a, a device that I used to use for helping to jump start my car with a one of these Leon. Oh, what are those batteries called? Lithium iron. Lithium iron. Tiny miniature battery yeah, pack yeah. to start up. Don't use it anymore because it's broken anyway. Um, spare fuses, connectors, and of course, spare aerials as well. More power supplies. More power supplies than I actually need. 
So it's like a little contained comms bag, isn't it? It is, it is. And that's important when you're doing comms work because you just never know what you're going to need. So for instance, if I want to be able to charge multiple things up using cigarette lighters, um, I've made up this little adapter and this will just plug straight into the battery as well. So if I'm not uh, near the car, you can still charge up various various uh, radios and bits of kit up with that as well. So it's all about having things that work alongside each other. So if you've got um, a radio which shares the same type of antenna connector, then it just makes it easy to use and easy to swap things around to get better performance, isn't it? It's all about having that flexibility. Yep. So I tend to keep these things all charged up in the bag. And to be honest, they don't get used all that often, but there are occasions where you've got a few hours on your hands, and you're out and about somewhere, and you just fancy doing a bit of comms work, having a bit of a play. And it's just having a tool at hand ready to do it as and when you want it. Uh, charge up your phone, spare battery. Pens, spare leads, and that's it. And that's my comms bag. That tends to live into the car. If this car was to get stolen or someone broke into it and stole it all, do you know what? There's nothing in there of any value. Okay. So that's basically how I uh, keep my car kitted up. I've got other stuff in uh, a bigger bag here. Um, you know, when you go off uh, for the day to do some radio work, it's nice to be able to light up a stove and uh, get a kettle on and have a nice hot cup of tea or coffee. Um, so I keep some stuff in there for that purpose as well. Always having plenty of blankets, because you never know. And that's it, and that's how I can turn my car. You mentioned tea and coffee there. Yeah, is it time to go in for a chat to the brew? I think it is. Come on then. supposed to be slimming but it's clearly not is it? No. <laughs> Make sure the zip's not showing. No, no sure. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all okay. Um, you may recognise this face that's with me today, it's James Fletcher. Uh, he's got a radio um, related channel on now. <sighs> Am I higher than you? No. Oh, I want to be. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Hope you. What's ready then? I hate doing it on camera for other people. Know, It'll yeah. be outtakes at the end of this video as well. Oh, yeah. That'll make that, a video of its own. Yeah, that's well. custom on my channel. <laughs> back in the room. Okay, so I'm not. I'm not going to see this now without laughing. Okay. That's it. Right. That's it. So let me think about like someone who's died. Oh. <laughs> 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 And it'll stop me from laughing. Uh, right. You're getting grey, you know. I know. I never realised how grey you are. In mm. real life, you're greyer. Stress. In real life, you're shorter and greyer. <laughs> are you recording now? I'll put this in. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, I need to do it while I'm not laughing. <laughs> right, I do you as well. Do you want a tablet first? We'll do this first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're doing your. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to do this now without <laughs> fucking laughing. <laughs> and then seeing you there is just making me laugh. All right. Right. Wait a minute. So, right, so we've come... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Three, right. two, one. And that's the, uh, the network radio ruined. Oh, it's not broken, has it? Up there. Boom. Is that alright? That was perfect. <laughs> 